I hear that train a coming, rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. But that train just keeps a rolling down to San Antonio. Hey, how you doing? Justin here. In this lesson today, we are checking out the Folsom Prison Blues by the legend that is Johnny Cash. Now, this is a fantastic beginner song. It's only using E, A, and B7 chords. You can use real simple strumming, it'll sound cool, or you can get into doing the boom chicka, boom chicka, boom chicka thing that Johnny Cash does, and that sounds really super awesome. So, as usual, we're going to start off with it real simple, make sure that we get the chords right in the chord sequence. Now, the interesting thing with this one, the chord sequence is kind of a bit skewed. It, I kind of think of it as like a 20 plus 2 bar chord sequence, which let me explain. So it's kind of f sections of four bars. So we've got four bars of E, another four bars of E, four bars of A, four bars of E, four bars of B7, and then just two bars of E strapped on the end there. So if I was writing it down, I'd be writing four bars of E, four bars of E, four bars of A, four bars of E, four bars of B7, and then two at the end of E. And it's, it's kind of, it, it'll help you kind of know the chord sequence there if you write it out like that, because visually those sort of things can give us a good cue, you know? And it's the same sequence through the whole tune, so that's, uh, you know, an important thing to get. So let's go first of all through just keeping the chords real simple with the, the, the straight strumming, and then I'll show you how to do this boom chicka thing and the, get the alternate bass going as well, which is a, one of the most fun things I think about playing this tune. Before we play really simply through this song, it's really important that you get the way that the rhythm is working. Now, when we're doing the boom chicka boom chicka thing, it's quite fast, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if we did four strums to the bar, we'd end up with one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And it kind of sound well, it doesn't sound very good, and it's not very easy to play, and it's kind of hard to count, and it's hard to get a feel for the lyric as well. So what I'd recommend you do if you're trying to get it right is to only play twice for each bar. So you'd be strumming on beats one and three, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you're using the songbook, if you've got that in front of you, each time the chord is written, you would strum twice. Right? So we would we're just going to be doing it strumming on beats one and three. So we start off the intro, it's just two bars of B7, two bars of E, and then we're into the main sequence. So we'd have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That would be the intro. Can't get much simpler than that. Now we get into the verse. So the first verse, I hear that train a coming, a rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when And we gone to a chord now It's for a whole four bars and Then we're back to E chord for another four bars as well uh, But that B7 keeps a rolling Down to San Antonio and that's where the sequence ends. So we've got the, just those two bars of E on, on the end there. So make sure you get that right first. You know, it's a, it, I can't stress again the importance of writing down these kind of chord progressions. It really should make it a lot easier for you. So I'd, I'd recommend that you do that. So start by playing it that way, just with that real simple strumming, two strums to the bar. Instead of the usual four strums to the bar, just strumming on beats one and three. It's the easiest way to think of it. Now, most of you are probably going to want to know about the boom chicka boom chicka thing because it's a lot of fun to do that. It can be quite tricky. It takes a bit more practice than it might first seem. Now, we're going to do it real slow to start off with, and there's kind of two levels of development, if you like. The first one is where you're just playing a bass note on beat one and two and, which would be a down and an up on the thinner string. So we end up having the boom being the bass and then a down up on the thinner strings. One, two, and three, four, and 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 one. Now that first note, the little down, is played on the bass note of the chord, right? Now, it doesn't really matter if you hit more than one string. So if you hit just the E or you hit the E and you accidentally hit a bit of the A string, that's fine too. When you start out, but the important thing to realize here, of course, when we go to the A chord, 
you really have to be hitting the fifth string, so your accuracy with the pick in hand has to increase considerably. But there is a little cheat which I'm going to share with you now too as well. When we go to the A chord, in order to be able to just hit that E, uh, the A note without hitting the E, it can be really helpful to bring the thumb over the top of the neck and just it'll just touch the E string. So don't press it down because then you might get a note, but it just kind of sneaks in over the top and touches that string very lightly. And it, that way if you accidentally hit the E string, you don't hear it, you just hear the A. And then back to the E regular. With the B7, the, the tip of your second finger should be muting the sixth string anyway. That's how you should have learned B7. If you didn't learn it that way, now's the time to start. So just get the, the tip of your second finger kind of pressing up a little bit, and that'll mute the sixth string. The, out, the added bonus as well is that it kind of makes sure that the fourth string is nice and clear as well. It gives a bit of extra space for that string. So that would be your first step to play through the whole song just using the bass note and down up. Bass, down up. So that would be, I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sun shine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison and time keeps dragging on. And then that train just keeps a rolling down the sand. Now I've already started accidentally going into the moving bass part, but to start off with, just keep the bass steady so the bass is playing the root note of the chord. So when you're playing an E chord, it'll be playing the E note. When you're playing the A chord, it'll be playing the A note. And when you're playing your B7, it'll be playing the B note. Now, I'm pretty sure that's what Johnny Cash is doing, just sticking to the root note. But the other guitar part, which is an electric guitar part that goes over the acoustic guitar part, is doing this kind of a uh, Travis picking little pattern and because it's doing that if you're playing by yourself on an acoustic guitar I think it sounds cool to kind of move the bass so you get the classic kind of country thing now if you're gonna do that on the E the the pick is going to be playing the sixth string then down up then the fifth string sixth string fifth string And another little handy hint here is to do with our thumb. Now, in order to, if we play the bass like that, just the bass, you can hear they kind of muddle together a bit. But if you go, if you bring your thumb over, when you move to playing the fifth string, my thumb has reached over and muted the thicker string. And it really he helps keep the, helps keep that kind of movement there between the bass notes kind of stronger if you like so you don't have to do that you can sounds fine but I just think it kind of helps define that bass part a bit but again that's a bit more beyond a beginner kind of thing I just thought I'd throw that in there for you guys that are learning this tune and want to kind of take it up a bit you know so uh, when it goes to a, the A chord the bass note is going to be moving from the A string to the thick E. And again, we're going to be using our thumb, muting the sixth string now, and then off when we hit the A. And here's another little trick for you. I probably, I might do this as a close up as well so you can see exactly what I'm talking. When I'm playing the A chord, I'm letting my, I'm pressing my second finger up a little bit to mute the A. So we get, you can really hear how to find the bass. If I don't do it, it kind of gets all muddled. It really, it, I'm sure this is a, a, a useful little trick for you. So I'll do a close up of that in a sec. But it's just using the second finger to kind of push up and mute the A string a little bit to help keep the clarification of the bass part. Uh, on the B7. We've got now, we're moving from the 5th string to the 6th string. And sometimes on that last one, I play the, the low note, the low 5th, which in this case is the note F sharp. Just kind of 
adds a little bit of funk to it, you know? So I think it sounds kind of nice. So if you play through that whole thing, I'll do it slightly slower than normal now, but with this kind of alternating bass pattern. So you'd have three, four. <laughs> So it's really good fun. It doesn't have to be super duper accurate, you know, don't worry. It, um, well, it's a good thing to practice at being super accurate, but especially if you're singing and playing it, you know, it's not, it's not the most important thing. And really, the electric guitar player should be playing that part with the alternating bass part, really. So if you want to do the authentic one, just keep hitting that root note. That the classic, you know, boom chicka thing, the Johnny Cash strumming pattern. Uh, but if you want to make it a little bit more fancy, having the movement going root to fifth, I think can sound pretty cool. So let's go to a qu quick close up of that if I can speak properly today. Okay, let me play it through one more time just so you can make sure that you see how the muting's working. So here we go. You see there the thumb muting the sixth string when I play the fifth string. Here we go for the A. Can you see my second finger pushing up a little bit to mute the A there? Onto the B7, we've just got that finger moving over, E. I hope you have a lot of fun playing this tune. It's a real grower. There's, you, you know, you can do it real simple or you can do it kind of hard depending on your ability level. Uh, if you want to do the electric guitar parts and the solo, I was going to do it, but a good buddy of mine, Dario Cortese, has done a super duper accurate version uh, on YouTube and on his website. Uh, there'll be a link on my website in this lesson page to uh, his videos. He's done the electric rhythm part and the solo for this tune. So if you want to check that out, there's some, there'll be some lessons on my site taught by him because there didn't seem to be any uh, point in repeating them when he's done them so accurately already. So uh, have fun with that and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.